In the two decades since Columbine, video games have been at the center of the controversy surrounding gun violence in America. Particularly violent video games. And it has experts and some parents alarmed. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. So over the past few decades, video games are in the center of the violence controversy. Whenever any major act of violence happens, politicians and the news start talking how video games are the main cause of that. So is this true? Do video games actually make people more violent? First off, people talk about this theory whenever a single person causes a major shooting somewhere in the world. And when they talk about this, they usually forget to mention that there are hundreds of millions of people on this planet who play video games on a daily basis, yet you don't see them committing violent crimes. Of course, the crime that is committed by that single person is a problem, especially when a lot of people get killed, but still, that's not proof that you can use to start blaming video games. If we are going to go through that route, then why politicians and the news don't mention movies and TV shows? You have more violent movies and TV shows that are airing online and on television than you have video games. But somehow people forget to mention that. One of my favorite TV shows is Dexter, which follows the life of a serial killer and even gets you to the point where you start loving and caring about a serial killer. Has anyone mentioned this on the news? And speaking of Dexter, another thing I want to mention is I've watched that show probably 5-6 times so far, from the first episode to the last one. And I never committed an act of violence and I don't plan to do that. What does that tell you? Are people the ones who need to be responsible on how they act or we should blame other factors like TV shows, movies, video games or something else? Now, I don't want to make this a biased case where every side is defending the thing we love and stand for. That's why I want to look at this from a logical standpoint and look at the proof from both sides. The first thing that I want to say is, people need to limit the time they spend playing video games. And this might sound weird coming from a video game developer, but I truly mean it. I am all for having fun and relaxing and resting and all that stuff, but I'm also for not exaggerating in those things. The human brain functions in a weird way. The more you do something or repeat something, the more it will stick in your head and make you think about it. That's why you see gamers talk about games when they are not playing them. And they even dream about playing video games because they play video games all day long, so their brain starts reflecting that in their everyday life. These are the things that can lead to people trying to recreate scenes from their favorite video games in real life, which can lead them to committing acts of violence. On the other hand, this all depends on the person itself. We are all unique in our own way and don't think the same. Someone's brain can be affected by the extensive amount of hours of playing video games and someone's brain will not be affected by that. Which means that one person can play video games every single day for months and that will not have any negative impacts on his behavior or how he thinks. But it also means that for another person, that can have negative impacts on his behavior or how he thinks. Thankfully, given the fact that the percentage of people who actually commit an act of violence in comparison to the number of people who play video games is very low, we see that the great majority of people are not affected by video games. Another thing that is important to mention is that the violence rate is not the same in every country. That's why you can find countries where people buy video games more frequently but the act of violence and crime rate are lower than in countries where people buy games less frequently. All this points to the fact that you can't blame video games for acts of violence that people commit. It's very unlikely that video games cause people to take a gun and start shooting everyone around without a particular reason. 
But again, it can happen sometimes, but even in that case, everything comes back to the person and what that person is going through in its life. Now I want to touch another aspect of video games and that is the positive effects and which human abilities can be enhanced while playing video games. Let's start with video games that people would consider violent like Counter-Strike. In Counter-Strike you have two sides who shoot each other, the last man standing wins. Now given the fact that this is a shooting game, you might think that it causes people to be violent, but on the contrary. Playing Counter-Strike improves coordination and precision. In Counter-Strike, the ability to hear your opponent can often mean that you win the match. This is the part that improves coordination. When it comes to precision, it's pretty obvious. You need to shoot the enemy to get his life points at zero. And this is where precision comes into play. The more you play the game, the better you will get at precision. And these are skills that you can transfer in real life as well. Not convinced? Well, here are a few more skills that gamers improve while playing video games. First, we have problem solving skills. Video games involve certain rules. This means that the player has to think carefully before making any move to ensure that they stay within the required rules of that particular game. The player needs to make split-second decisions that will determine whether or not he or she will advance to the next level. Playing video games also enhances memory, because playing your favorite video game may require both visual and audio memory. The player is required to read or listen to the instructions which might only be provided at the beginning of the game, thus the need to remember them throughout the entire game. Mastery of the keys on your keyboard helps you easily move your character in the game. This helps improve your memory, whether short term or long term. Also, playing video games improves attention and concentration. Video games, especially action games, have proven to be able to capture the player's attention for the entire period of the game. This is important because of the player's need to achieve certain objectives within the game and be able to progress to the next level. Video games can also improve the brain's speed. While gaming or playing, the brain receives multiple stimulations, both visual and audio. According to the research, individuals who play video games frequently can process these stimulators faster than others. These stimulators ensure that the brain is continuously working to interpret them. Video games can also enhance multitasking skills. An action game, for example, may require you to be very observant. It requires you to be able to move your joystick or keys while looking at the various features on your screen, such as energy levels, oncoming adversaries, ammunition left, available time, among other factors, and so on all which are vital to winning. This ensures that the player can observe and react accordingly to all requirements of that particular game. And believe it or not, video games are a great source of learning. Gaming is not only beneficial to adults and teenagers, but to children as well. Many modern education institutions incorporate video games as a teaching methodology. This helps these institutions improve children's academic skills by providing video games that are specifically aimed at enhancing their cognitive and creative skills. These are just a few things that gamers improve while playing video games. And there are a lot more that we can talk about, but I don't want to make this video too long. These are my views on the statements from politicians and news who claim that video games are causing people to be violent. As you can see, in the majority of cases, video games improve human abilities. Of course, in some cases, it can cause people to be violent, but these cases are very rare and the person who committed the act of violence didn't do it just because of some particular video game. Instead, a lot of other things were involved in that. 
Anyways, if you like the video, hit that thumb up, comment and share the video so other people can see it. And don't forget to subscribe. I also have a few links in the description of the video that can help you learn game development. So make sure to check them out. And until then, I will see you guys in the next video.